Well, welcome back. Well, we've had, uh, in the past, not too long ago, a couple guests from Breastlink, which is located here, uh, one of their areas in Laguna Hills. Well, today we have the namesake of that organization. We have Dr. John Link, and it's nice to have you on, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Happy to be here. And uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your background. Uh, you are, um, uh, you wrote this uh, great book. You're an oncologist, correct? Correct. And uh, this is the fifth edition of this book, The Breast Cancer Survival Manual. So tell me a little bit about your background and then how, how Breastlink came about. Good. So um, I'm uh, born and raised in Southern California and uh, went to medical school at USC and did my all of my training uh, at uh, USC Norris Cancer Center back in the early days of oncology. And about 20 years ago, 20, 22 years ago, I made the decision to specialize just in breast cancer. And it was at a time where screening, uh, we were really changing the management of breast cancer, where it was no longer just a, a one a physician, one doctor disease. It really mm -hmm. took a, mm -hmm. a team of doctors to take care of women with breast cancer. So I, uh, at the time I was practicing in Long Beach uh, and at Long Beach Memorial Hospital, we founded a comprehensive breast center and it was probably the first community breast center in the United States. Oh, really? And um, we, I created a group of physicians called Breastlink surgeons, plastic surgeons, medical oncologists, imagers that all worked together and specialized in the care of breast cancer and particularly geared to the individual woman. And so the Breastlink uh, unit here in Laguna Woods in, in, uh, is, uh, we're very excited about it and uh, I think that uh, it will be a really good thing for women in this area. Yeah, it definitely will. And uh, your survival manual here, and I like right. the fact that you call it a survival manual. Uh, your fifth edition here, and um, I see it came out, the first one, in uh, 1998, at least according by the copyright in here. With each edition that has come out over the years, is there obviously new information that is a research that you gain and uh, different techniques and, and different things are put into each edition, correct? correct. So what I originally wrote the book, uh, 98, it was a manual for women coming into our practice. Oh, okay. And, like uh, what they could expect. What they could expect thing. and how <clears throat> breast cancer is treated and uh, everything you needed to know it, being newly diagnosed and take kind of the stigma away from it and really educate women to what to expect and, mm -hmm. and what outcomes should be. And it was so widely accepted and the reviews were good so um, we published it. And so this is the fifth edition and about every three years uh, things have changed so much that a new edition is necessary. So this edition has about 30% new information over the one from four years ago. And a lot has changed in the last uh, three or four years around cancer treatment in general, but mm -hmm. particularly breast cancer. One of the, the, the cure rate for breast cancer has gone in the, from, in the last 30 years from 55% to 90% now. Wow. So it's, major, major um, improvement due to screening and better therapies. And one of the things I've been particularly interested in is that now that we've got the cure rate so high that we don't need tremendous over-treatment to achieve that kind of survival and cure rate. So uh, I'm very interested in backing off on, on many of our toxic treatments. Uh, right too aggressive surgery, radiation, uh, we give a lot less chemotherapy than we used to, particularly in women over 50. And part of that is due to now we can take the cancer, we can do a genetic analysis of the cancer cells, and we can divide the breast cancer in, into one of four types. And if it's the luminal type, which is what a majority of older women have, 
we avoid chemotherapy, often we avoid radiation therapy, and for many women, it's getting the cancer out with a good clear margin, and sometimes a little pill, either a pill called tamoxifen or another type of oral therapy called an aromatase inhibitor. And um, so it really, we've come a long way from the days where women dreaded finding a breast lump uh, when they would end up with a, a mastectomy mm -hmm. and lymphedema. Uh, so we've really moved away from that kind of uh, therapy. And this is really what, um, as you alluded to, what BreastLink has to offer is that is a comprehensive re approach that involves obviously treatment, but if also needed reconstruction, whatever it may be, it's, it's a, a place that uh, a woman can go, and I, I would assume every once in a while a man as well, and be confident that they're not only getting the treatment for the disease, but beyond that. Correct, so all of us <laughs> focus on a single disease, um, and we communicate. And so we individualize treatment, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we have support services, nutrition, psychosocial counseling. Um, so it's everything's under one roof, and we, we hope, I think we're making the disease, um, the treatment outside the hospital setting. So it's almost totally outpatient. And uh, it, you know, I think it's really good for women. And you're also a, a great supporter. You often hear people get a second opinion and things like that, and it's not something that bothers you. Absolutely not. Um, many women, uh, we see women from all over the world, actually, for mm -hmm. second opinions. S some of it's from the book, but it's, some of it's from the research that we've done. Uh, and clearly, uh, in the old days, if women or, or patients were afraid to get second opinions because they did not want to offend their doctors, but today it's, it's something that, particularly with a major illness, and if there's time, I really encourage uh, women to get a second opinion because what, what used to be the treatment of breast cancer was a sequential treatment. Mm -hmm. The surgeon saw the patient, uh, the surgeon, he or she did their thing, they passed the patient on to the radiation doctor perhaps or the plastic surgeon or the medical oncologist. Now we can develop a treatment plan before anything is done and we know the different components and who's gonna play a role. And the woman has time to see the various doctors and have a plan. And um, if, if a woman doesn't have the kind of insurances we accept, or if she's in Kaiser or mm -hmm. in an HMO, we certainly make ourselves available to help her develop that plan if she can't be treated in our, in our place. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good question. You, the type of insurances that you take, is it PPO, HMO, or it just depends? Just depends. We, okay. we try to avail ourselves to you know, all women, so mm -hmm. it's certainly, um, but, but we do, take PPOs and we have some contracts with HMOs. Okay. Uh, we, we take Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, and if a woman really wants to come to us and, and, and it, we're not part of her insurance plan, we certainly can try to, to uh, help that happen. And you do general uh, breast cancer screening there, even if someone, uh, I, I don't know how often women should come, come in after a certain age, but do you do that sort of thing? Yes, so in the facility we we have dedicated mammography, and we have the absolute latest type of mammography, which is called 3D or TOMO mammography, mm -hmm. where uh, we can actually, it's like, a, it's like a, uh, uh, an MRI or a CAT scan where we can layer through the, the, the technology allows us to, in a 3D way, to go through the films. Oh, okay. And so it's, it's much more accurate. We, um, do workups, needle biopsies, stereotactic biopsies, ultrasounds. So we do all of the imaging in our facility. Obviously with any kind of disease, um, the key thing is, is prevention. And I think with, uh, with uh, breast cancer and other cancers, I know there's a lot of research being done as far as um, genetics and things like that. 
but is there anything that has come along when it comes to the type of uh, cancer that you deal with where there could be a, a, at least some sort of prevention or so, uh, some sort of benefit to a different lifestyle change or whatever it may be? Have you yeah. seen that yet? Yeah, it, that's a really good question. And it's, the epidemiologists have been working on it for the last 25 years. We mm -hmm. know a couple of things. One, family history, uh, particularly women that carry a certain gene mm -hmm. called the BRCA1 or the BRCA2 gene are quite susceptible to breast cancer. So we encourage women that have strong family histories to get that gene or okay. make sure they don't have it. Uh, secondly, we know that there is a link to excess estrogen and uh, in the development of the luminal type of breast cancer. Uh, and we know that um, obesity probably plays some role mm -hmm. with that es excess estrogen in the whole metabolic kind of uh, pathways with insulin growth factors and those kinds of things. So I think um, having women have, uh, you know, maintain a good body weight, mm -hmm. uh, body mass for their height and their bone structure. And then there's some data that suggests that maybe vitamin D deficiency may have some role in breast cancer development. That's interesting because we've heard about, just recently I've heard about, uh, you know, obviously people use very strong sunscreens and a little bit of vitamin D or getting out a little bit of the sun is great, but I've heard there's actually been vitamin D deficiency over the last 10 years just because people are so protective, which for skin cancer is great. Right, right. So uh, that's something that uh, they're looking at. It's very interesting. And vitamin D deficiency is something pretty easily corrected. Right. Vitamin D is added to cereal and milk and all kinds yeah. of things. So, but we like to see levels for women over, we like to see the level over 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been a, a big recent article of a meta-analysis uh, from the epidemiologists looking at mm. a very large number of big population studies looking at vitamin D deficiency and incidence of mm -hmm. breast cancer. And there seems to be some role. Very interesting. Well, Dr. Link, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, we should mention that uh, BreastLink is uh, your facility just opened. You had your grand opening, I think, a couple weeks ago. That's uh, right over here, over by the uh, Saddleback Medical Center. And uh, your number, local number here is 949-770-0797. Or you can go online to breastlink.com. You can get all the information there. And where can somebody pick up this book? Is it available online at your office? It's, or? Uh, it, you know, for any of the, the bookstores, it's in, in, in our office. It's Amazon. Okay. There is an electronic version of it. So. Great. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people want the electronic books now. Yeah. Doctor, thank you very much. Great information, and it's a pleasure meeting you. Nice meeting you. We'll Thanks. be back in just a moment.